Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them on to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've already talked about what's going on in the market. It's a great day in the market. It's uh, April 13th. It's almost 2 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, the market is exploding. Uh, we're all we're about 2.2 trillion uh, market cap. Bitcoin is reaching all-time high. Ethereum is reaching all-time high. Everything is just up massively. And what I want to talk to you about is this was a great question uh, from Tony. And Tony was... He was uh, one of our guides over there in Puerto Rico. We went on an excursion in the rainforest. Good guy, good guy. And, and he was uh, asking me about, you know, cryptocurrencies. And he's like, listen, did I miss the boat? Because, you know, I've, I've only got so much to really invest into. And I don't want to make a mistake of just putting it into and then just, you know, just lose everything because I'm going to hit the top. And then how much can I really make? Because, you know, maybe this is not the time because maybe I could just put into something else, uh, my business, uh, some other type of uh, property or maybe a stock and make more money. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty good question, especially if you don't have a ton of money to, you know, dump all into it. And maybe, you know, because we see all these huge all-time highs, new higher highs, this currencies or this crypto is going up. This digital asset is, uh, you know, uh, going to the moon already. So are you missing everything? And I'm here to tell you, you haven't. And I'm going to pretty much lay out exactly why that is. So uh, before I get into dollar cost average, value cost average, and just going all in, the times to do that and the times to be super cautious, let me just take you through a little lesson. And if you are new to the channel, this will be enlightening. If you're not new, you're like, Ugh, Rob, with his four, four year averages or four year cycles, I'll make this quick. So, look, everything in the last eight years has been a four year cycle. This cycle is a little bit different. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So, everything goes with Bitcoin. Right, Bitcoin is a thing called a having, and once you have the having, you the miners they get they do the same work, but they get half the results. So in 2012, you went from 50 to 25, right in a day. That's what happens. So you have the same demand, but half the supply, and that suck. Well, not for prices. So you have a having in 2012, and it late leads to an all-time high. Again, you have a ton of demand, but half the supply. And then after that all-time high, you get these big hockey sticks and the smart money is like, that's unsustainable. And then there's a, there's a dip and then a reset. Same thing happened in the last boat run, 2016, having You had an all-time high, smart money goes, this hockey stick, this are just unsustainable. You have a dip and a reset. And we're having the same thing again this year, uh, these last two years. 2020 was a having. 2021 will be our all-time high. We've already hit the all-time highs, but, I, but the thing is, let me pull this up. In reality, we have to extrapolate this year because if you take a look at this year over here, it kind of looks very condensed, 2021, right? It looks like, where are we? Well, this is where we're at. You have to understand January, February, March, April, it's only April 13th. We're still on this very flat trajectory. Let me blow this up so you can see it. We're still in this very flat trajectory, right? It's very flat. Um, and there's not really not, not too much going on. So the question is, is like, well, should I get into it? This is not financial advice. Let me make that very clear. Um, and as you notice, uh, we're in my house today. Uh, the pool room office is being uh, redone because it's falling apart. That's how it is. But I need to put this out because I thought it was important. So you have to understand that as this kind of goes out, did you miss the boat? Did you miss everything? In my opinion, this is the second best time you could possibly invest. The best time was in 2018 and 19 when it just fell down to the ground and everything was going flat or just going down and down and down. You could have picked up some really cheap stuff. And that's how that goes. So right now, if we take a look at this chart, if we extrapolate from you know, what happened in the last bull run, the bull run for that, it looks pretty much like we just saw, right? Big, huge hockey stick going up, becomes unsustainable. So if I had like, let's say a thousand bucks, let's just use round numbers, right? Some of you have uh, way less. Some of you have way more. Uh, I don't know where you're at, but round numbers seems to work pretty well for me because I'm not great at math. <laughs> so here we go. So if you did this, let's say in January, like 25 bucks once a week, I'm going to put into something, whatever that is. That could be Bitcoin. That could be Ethereum. That could be tomato coin, whatever else it is, right? If you want to take a look at Bitcoin, uh, that's a pretty good, pretty good bet, right? So 25 bucks uh, here uh, per week, so that's like 100 bucks a month. And then here, then maybe you step up your game. You're like, you know what? I'm going to put 50 bucks uh, every other week here because maybe there was a dip or something. Okay. And you go da 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 and then around here. But you see how, like, once it starts to go up, once it starts to go up, 
you don't want to start to put a bunch of money into it because see right here in June, this is June. This was actually June 2017. Obviously around 2021, I'm just, getting, I'm just doing a, uh, a parallel. What you want to do is if you're dollar cost averaging and you want to put 20 bucks in, you want to wait a little bit until you see a dip. You could do whatever you want to. But for me, this is how I do things. I just dollar cost average in and then I just go along. If it's sideways, I, you know, about 25 bucks. But when it starts to dip and I see a big dip, I put more in for my dollar cost averaging. August, September, October. Once you start to see these huge price influxes, because you have to understand in 2017, Bitcoin's around a thousand bucks. In March, you're looking at 1400. Uh, April 1500. That is, you know, 1.5x uh, in just a small amount of time. Then when you get here, you're looking at three thousand, four thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. So when you start to go from four thousand down to like uh, three thousand, that's the time you probably want to dollar cost average in, but put a little bit more money if you can at the right times as it's dipping. So then maybe you put on twenty five and fifty and whatever else. So again. I think if we look at parallels between what has happened before and what's going to happen, this is, in my opinion, April, May, maybe around June, pretty great time to invest however you want to do it. Now, here's another, another thing you could do, or I could do. I can't give you any, any uh, financial advice. So what if you just do what's called value cost average? Well, instead of doing dollar cost average, what some people say is pretty boring, like, you know what? I want a little bit more risk. I want to just go in a little bit more heavy. Let's say you got a thousand bucks. So just take four price points and put in 250. Let's say you had $2,000. Well, you put in 500 bucks and do four. It, and it doesn't really matter. You could have $10,000 and you want a value cost average in over eight you know, time periods or whatever else. It doesn't matter. Value cost average and dollar cost average are pretty similar. You're just using a little bit more money in a small amount of time frame. So in this situation, let's say you take, uh, you're like, you know what? In March, I'm going to put 250 here. And then uh, it, just not do anything and watch it go up. I'm pretty happy about that. Maybe you take profits, maybe you don't, I don't know. And then around here, 250, you say, okay, I'm going to buy it right here. Maybe it goes down a little, ah, no big deal. Then you, then you wait and all of a sudden, ah, there's a big dip. I'm going to buy this. And it comes over here, it goes up. Maybe take profits here or not. Maybe you let it ride. Maybe you come up here. Again, you see a little bit of a dip, bam, you jump on it. And there you go. And then you wait for this to happen. This big hockey stick where I talk about Things are just unsustainable. That is value cost averaging. So I go on 25, 25, 25, you just put big lumps into four, six, eight, 12 different uh, allocations. And then here's my, uh, here's what my friend Diddy does. Diddy is from the Bitcoin family. Link in the description, great channel. He just said like this, this is what he did. In 2017, he just said, you know what? I'm just gonna sell my entire house, uh, my businesses, my motorcycles, my kidneys, and I'm just gonna just, put it all on Bitcoin. And he put not a thousand bucks, he put a lot in. But for me, if I wanted to go all in, this would probably be the time maybe to do it. There's a little bit more risk. Actually, there's a lot of bit, a lot more risk because we never know what could potentially happen. Maybe an EMP comes down and destroys everything as far as electronic. Maybe there's, who knows, some kind of catalyst that just destroys Western civilization. Or maybe there's some kind of microbe that destroys all computers. I I don't know. Maybe there's another pandemic. Who knows? I don't know. So like with this situation, if you go all in, it's really about like, first of all, never go all in when you see like a 200%, 400%, 600% increase in a very short amount of time. That's not a great idea. I wouldn't do that. You can do whatever you want to do, not financial advice. But if you're everything's trading sideways and you think uh, you believe in technology, you believe in the team of whatever the cryptocurrency is, that's probably a good time to go in. But there's a flip side to everything, and I need to show you this, even though it's not most fun. So let's take a look again at 2021, and let's go into 2022. So remember, in those four-year cycles, what happened after an all-time high? There was a dip and a reset, and that was in 2012, 2013. And then 2017, all-time high, dip and a reset. So everything's looking pretty good, right? Except when you get to this dip and reset. Now, people will tell me, and they could be right, that this is totally different, Rob, because there are so many institutions and there are so many people stabilizing the entire crypto market. And I say to them, you are full of it because here's what it comes down to. 
these institutions, they are not stabilizing the entire crypto market. They are stabilizing Bitcoin and to some extent Ethereum. So I can see definitely what you're saying there. But I do not believe that these institutions are here to stabilize a tomato coin, to stabilize a pick your 100 uh, altcoin, pick anything below the, 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 the top 10. They're not here to stabilize those things. They're here to stabilize, especially these big, huge uh, institutions, Bitcoin. So when people talk about, well, there's going to be a bear market, there's going to be a bear market. Do I know it's going to be totally focused on Bitcoin and everything else? Nah, not for sure. That's why I'm only getting out half of my position of Bitcoin and I'm getting out 80 to now 90% of all of my altcoins. So I do believe that there is a bear market coming. So if you are just involved in the Bitcoin, a little bit different for you, but if you're involved in any kind of alts, and that's of course where we talk about risk versus reward, this is something you want to pay attention to. So let's take a look at the back end of 2017, which was 2018, 2019. Let's extrapolate that out to maybe potentially 2022 and 2023. So what's going on here? Well, if we dollar cost average, which we could definitely do at that point, uh, here's the problem with dollar cost averaging in pretty much a bear market. See here, let me blow this up. Actually, really, let me blow it up. Let's say we start over here and we got, this is January. Ah, not a great one. Do the regular view. That's good. So we got January here. This is when a lot of people, not you, usually FOMO in into cryptocurrency digital assets, everything at the top. It's amazing. Uh, it all looks awful when you are you know, looking at this and then you, you kind of come in, you're like, oh, it's all the way at the top. That's what I want to buy because it's going to keep going to the moon. Trust me. You think it's funny right now, but that's exactly what's going to happen. If you're watching this video, you're pretty early to the game. Wait till August, September, October, November, when everybody who you've ever known in your life, is probably going to be calling you for what's up with this Bitcoin. This is where they're going to buy into. So they're going to do this and they're going to lose a bunch of money uh, because they're like, well, I mean, they were smart enough to dollar cost average or good enough, then that's great. So 20 bucks, like, hey, I lost a little bit. Then they're like, well, it went down, but it'll come back up. And it sure did. You're like, you know what? I'm pretty savvy. I'm going to buy it again. Then it kind of goes down and down, which maybe you listen. You're like, you know what? I'm waiting for this massive dip. And then it dips down here and you get lucky, 50 bucks. You're like, oh, I'm a genius. And then it goes up. But see, the problem is you've already spent 200 bucks here. And, you, and you, actually, you spent $300. And only $100 worth of that is actually going to be in profit. So now you could take profit, but it's not that much. And you've actually lost some. But you're like, you know what? I'm still going to dollar cost average, 25, 50, 25. And you try to do the things that you're supposed to do, which is buy the dips, which is great. But you're already kind of underwater over here. And that's one of those problems. And it's just one of those things. So you can dollar cost average, and that's what I recommend. So when are you going to make money in dollar cost averaging? Well, it's going to work out pretty well. After the bear market, you start to do, when everything goes sideways, you just hold and hold, and you become an investor. And yes, it's going to take a little bit of time, but there is no get-rich-quick schemes. And then once you do all this for you know six months to a year to 18 months, maybe as time goes on, things are looking pretty good and you sell over here. That is one of those things with a bear market or a bull market versus an actual bear market. Here's another example. So what if we just did value cost averaging? Well, we can do that again, but again, this is what I think majority of people are gonna do. They're gonna buy at the top and then they're gonna lose a bunch of money. And they're like, well, shoot, I'll just wait until, you know, what I hear everybody talks about is buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, have strong hands, diamond hands. I can do that. I buy the dip. I'm a genius. And then it goes down even more. And you're like, oh, this sucks. Then it goes here. And you're pretty much even dip up, dip. You're like, you know what? I'll just wait and tell another, another dip and I'll just keep buying. Buy here or buy there. You can buy anywhere you want to. The problem is that most people buy at the top and they sell at the bottom, which is pretty much the thing that you're not supposed to do, but it does happen. So again, when can you do this? You just got to write it out and that's it. Again, the difference between a bull market and a bear market. And lastly, you want to go all in? Sure. Maybe you get smart. You're like, that's crazy. I'm going to wait for a dip. You wait for the dip. You buy it here. I'm a genius. And it goes up. I'm great. But I know it's going to go higher. And then it does this. So that is the problems with a bull market versus a bear market. Again, I think if you're here right now, 
you're in a pretty great place, I believe. Um, even if you go dollar cost average, if you need value cost average, or you go on and on at some point. But the thing is, is like, you have to be careful because some people will just say, well, I'll just go all in and I'll just wait for four or five years. That might work for you, but it doesn't work for everybody because some people, they just look at their portfolio and go, wow, I just lost 20%. But the last thing I'll tell you is this. This is not the traditional market. This is cryptocurrency and digital assets. And you have to understand that a 20% to 30% dip is not a big deal. In the traditional market, in the stock market, NASDAQ, that's huge. And that's going to be just awful. But here in crypto, we call that a Tuesday. Not a big deal. So if you're new to the space, don't worry. You're probably here for the really great ride. And I commend you. I wish I could have started here, but I didn't. I started all the way back in 2017 and did the exact problems I just laid out. I bought the top and I could have sold the bottom, just too damn stubborn. And I just held on dollar cost average for the last four years. And here we are. All right. So that's it for this video. If you made it all the way to the end, first of all, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Tony, this is for you. You are in the right place at the right time. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, the little button's uh, down below. Hit the bell. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.